You have to quantify it. Don't go in there and be like, I'm a great team player and I'm on time every day. You have to say, this is the money that I've made you mm -hmm. or saved you. That's it. I There's two that. things. Hello, I'm Brittany Castro, certified financial planner, content creator, talk about all things personal finance, business, and marketing. And I'm here with my girl, Emily. Hey, Brittany, good to see you again. I'm the founder of Wealth Voice. It's a tech startup. I'm also a marketing consultant and a personal finance aficionado. Brittany and I are here to talk about the ins and outs of personal finance, true stories, what we're learning and finding out about hacks and just share the knowledge with you. So absolutely. And today we're going to talk about negotiation and women and money. <laughs> so salary, salaries, negotiation, how to make more money. So 60% of women actually said they've never negotiated their salary. And this was a CNBC stat that came out. And then going into 2020, Emily, women earn 82 cents for every man's dollar. And I feel like that number has legit not changed in the 15 years I've been working. Um, but it really shocked me that 60% of women haven't asked for more money or negotiated their salary. Um, but I do have to say when I used to do personal finance, I don't do it anymore. I sold that part of my company. But when I would educate women about money, I would say, you have to ask like that's why we have a, a wage gap because we don't ask so if you don't ask you can never get it right so this goes in all areas of our life love dating kids relationships money if we don't ask we'll never be able to get what we really want that's so true Brittany. you have to ask and what i have found in my career is you have to ask for something that feels a little uncomfortable yes as women we are less likely to negotiate but if it helps, one of the tips is think about your negotiating for your family or your kids or your future and not for you. Because women sometimes feel a little more able to do it on behalf of others. We're very communally minded. Mm -hmm. But we were talking about this. And my big thing is like, I wanna talk about money with my girlfriends, especially because I want women to be empowered. And if we share knowledge, it's just like when you're renting an apartment building, tell all your neighbors what you pay. Someone else might be like, oh, I'm paying $300 less than you for the same exact unit. So that's bargaining chip, right? It's mm -hmm. power to share this information. So if you're a freelancer, like, what do you charge for this service? Oh, I was only charging this. Glad I asked because I know I can get more now, right? Yeah, and obviously you want to do it with your trusted people. Like, I do think when you're in the workplace and you have a job, you have to be very careful mm -hmm. about this because unfortunately people um don't always have this like win-win mentality but i'm talking about like your homies like your yeah. friends, right like and you know people that you you know so for me like even recently i connected with this guy who's like a creative designer and he gave me his like sh rates sheets about um how much he's charging for like design work and i sent it to my friend who has a business that's the same kind of business and she was like oh my god thank you so much for sharing this because she was undercharging, and she had no idea like what she should be charging but like just seeing a comparison to somebody with the same experience same talent but he was a man made her feel like more confident to be like, oh, I need to raise my rates. I'm like, yes, girl, you need to raise your rates because all of us, if we're not raising our rates or asking for at least like six, 7% more this year, we're not even keeping up with inflation. So getting uncomfortable and, and finding ways to create more value or ask for the value that you're already bringing to the table, ask for the dollar amount is something we all have to do. And I think it's just like part of it, you know, it never ends, but the sooner you just get in the practice of it, like every year to either increase your rates or ask for the higher salary, the better off you're gonna be. Right, and the younger you are, the better, because think about it this way, if you're starting, let's say you're in your early 20s, early in your career, and you start from $50,000, the next time you get a raise, you're starting from there. If you started from 40, a 10% raise isn't as much. So the higher, the rate, the earlier, the better. And these are your prime earning years. If you think about money building over time, the power of compounding, like make as much money when you're young as possible. It's not like, oh, I have time to make it later. You start it from a higher threshold if you can. Yeah. You'll thank yourself when you're 70. Exactly. And you know what? Another thing I have a tip for this. So as a self-employed individual, having a business coach is tremendously helpful or somebody to negotiate on your behalf like now my business model is a little bit different and i have a manager and she negotiates all my contracts and thank god because one it's more professional i'm not re i'm removed from those conversations and i could just show up as a talent 
but she is more of the shark and she goes and gets more money for me um so when you have somebody who's like not emotionally connected Mm -hmm. to the money it's easier for them to tell you the rate or go get the rate that you deserve but you got to have those people in your corner like even with the business coach i i would ask her like oh i'm doing this you know consulting gig what do you think i should charge them and she'd be like oh this is what you should charge and i was like oh thank god i asked because i wasn't going to charge that much i was going to charge lower and she was like well if you want this go get that if you want this number ask for this which is what yep. you said part of because part they're of the going negotiation. to negotiate you down especially yeah, when it comes to salary that's the negotiation. So, You're here, they're there, and you find somewhere in the middle. Um, so you got to know those numbers. If you just do some research, I mean, you can go on Glassdoor, just research, like type in the job title and your zip code mm-hmm. or city and see what are the comparable rates that people are making for this position. That'll give you an idea. But mm-hmm. if you're doing a negotiation for a raise at a job where you've already been, and I did this when I was maybe 26 or 27, I said, here is all the money I made you. And here's all the money I saved you. That's what business owners care about. You have to quantify it. Don't go in there and be like, I'm a great team player and I'm on time every day. You have to say, this is the money that I've made you or saved you. That's it. There's two things. And I put it into a deck and I was like, I want you to pay me 70% more than you're paying me right now, because I was making way less than I realized like the comps. They didn't bite, but then I went down the street to another interview and I asked for an uncomfortable number. I doubled my salary and he was like, oh, sure. Yep. Yeah. You've been at this company doing this for four years and all these great results. So, you know, starting like jump to the next lily pad. Sometimes that's also a great way to get a higher salary and don't tell anyone what you made before. It's another business. They actually legally can't ask. So where are you now? Don't answer it. I make a comfortable living and what my finances are, you know, it's between me and uncle Sam, but what kind of compensation are you willing to like, what's the range for the position? That is a good one. I mean, that's really key. You can teach a whole course on negotiation. I, I had some good teachers. Uh, negotiation, great book, Rec. Uh, Never Split the Difference by Chris oh, yeah. Voss. He was a FBI hostage negotiator. That one has some really good tips too. Yeah, that one's great. Um, and I think also too, I would just say it comes with practice. Like just get in the habit of practicing the conversation, but always, if you can, find somebody that you can ask for feedback before you give them numbers and try not to give the first number I always mean, that's a negotiation tactic always ask what's your budget or what's a salary or what what is the rate i used to have like a speaker rate kit you know that i would send out and i removed all that like no because every first of all every event or every project i do is so different so every number is going to be so different but then also it just like re- it lessened my negotiation power. So like you said, don't, you know, you don't have to share your past like earning history when you're a business owner, you also, unless you have a service, right? This is a service fee. But if you're negotiating projects or consulting gigs, you don't have to have that like publicized everywhere. You can do it based on the project and what kind of work is involved. You're not a barista, right? So like, what do you make per hour? I don't answer that question. It's project Mm -hmm. basis. Doesn't matter how many hours I work, the result is the same for you and this is the value i love it we can talk about this all day long i feel like this topic in itself could be like (laughs) it it is we should do more on this one great so great yeah if you like this please subscribe to our youtube channel um this one mine emily's we're going to create more content uh definitely here just to help you with all things finance business marketing these types of conversations that we get to like experience i feel like every day in our work lives but i don't think everybody has that opportunity so we're just trying to share the knowledge share the wealth exactly thanks guys subscribe thumb up comment with any questions you have below and we'll see you next time